Uh, my name is Gabriel Brown. I'm the CEO of Vivix Credit Solutions. Uh, we've been in Las Vegas now for 14 and a half years. When I first moved to Vegas, I was homeless. I lived on the streets. I lived in the park uh, for four and a half months until I found my way through the unction of the Holy Spirit yeah, yeah. and found an office that I was walking in to use the restroom. And the Holy Spirit told me to go into this office park and I was walking up the street because I was a band out of Smith's where I was eating dates every day, thinking I was testing them, but in reality I was getting sustenance from them. So I couldn't go into the Smith's. So I'm on Flamingo eastbound crossing Fort Apache and the Holy Spirit said go into this office park and use the restroom. When I opened the door of the office park, there was a gentleman there. He said, are you the young man that called for instructions? And if anyone knows, the closer you get to the restroom, the more you have to go. And so I played along and I said, yes, I am. I went to the restroom and they had lotion in there and a little soap. And I took a little bird bath and came out. And that gentleman was actually looking for someone that was going to lease an office. And I ended up leasing that office from that company 14 and a half years ago. I uh, went out in front of the office and stood out and I asked God, what will you have me do? I have no peers, I have no friends, I'm new in town, so what am I going to sell? And I closed my eyes and I was standing out in front of the sun hoping my pineal gland would open or something. And as I'm standing there, I hear a word outside of my body, not inside my body, and the word I thought it was, was sir. I thought someone was waking me up. And I looked around and there was no one there. And what I heard, I said, oh, God, I, I'm starting to look at all the names of the buildings and all the names of the companies. And I said, oh, God, you want me to serve, not serve. So I said, well, serve who? I have no home. I have no peers. I have no friends. And as I was looking across the street, there was Allied Mortgage Company. And I said, ah, uh -huh, God, you want me to serve the business community. And so I then started my business serving, doing marketing for companies in the community. And I would ask them, can I take your business cards and go out and drive traffic to your business, aggregate them here for you, and you pay me whatever you feel my service was worthy of. And I would just take their business cards and I would go out and, and say this every day. This is the number one real estate company in the city of Las Vegas, the people's choice, voted number one every year. If you need any real estate, please go to this company. This is the number one dental office in the city of Las Vegas. <laughs> 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 This, company. this is the number one law firm in the city of Las Vegas, all the people's choice, all right? And so I started getting donations from the companies, all right? And I started doing so well that a law firm that did credit law said, I want you to exclusively work for us. And I thought, oh, I just got good at working for everybody. I just want to work for one person, right? And then there was an accounting firm that said, I want you to work for us exclusively. Wow. And so they pinned me in, and one gentleman, he did corporate structure and corporate credit. He said, I'll give you 10 points on a line of credit. We, I'm going to package it up. You get the clients. We're going to do S2553s, LLCs, LLPs, or whatever, and we're going to walk into the bank and get 10 points. I said, okay, 10 points, what is that? Is this a basketball? <laughs> he was like, no, whatever they get, we're going to get 10%. I said, okay. So we started walking clients in the bank, and I would make five, ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 a client. And then the law firm, they did credit law, and they said, we want you to keep driving business to our office so we can do credit repair, and then we'll pay you per file. Well, I drove so many clients to their office that they said, you know, it's got to stop. This is too labor intensive. We're going to go back to personal injury, right? And so when, when, when that happened, I ended up getting in the credit repair business by being an agent of their contracts and then licensing ourselves to do credit repair, and then boom, the last 14 years I've been doing credit repair. Now, the reason I'm here is because Mr. Thomas and Mr. Purnell invited me because I wanted to refer our clients to someone that could help them manage money. I teach clients how to manage credit, right? But manage money, I, I'm not too good at that. I have a Rolls Royce outside, and I probably have less money in the bank than many of you. But I come from a place where I never had anything, right? My mother had a seventh grade education. My dad had an eighth grade education. I remember having to spell 70 for my mom when she was writing a check to pay a bill. And I was seven or eight years old, all right? 
but my mom could add up a circumstance, two circumstances to equal a situation. She could tell me, she could tell, she could tell me, if you keep doing that with her or him, this is what we have. Right? I, had, I had calculus, but I didn't know how to add up circumstances to equal a situation. Right? So I realized that I came from an impoverished background where I thought, all the things that you imagine you should have. And right. even to this age, I believe that. Mm -hmm. So then when I got that together, I started wanting to see other people have what they wanted mm -hmm. in their lives, yeah. even if it was frivolous. Oh, you want a, you want a house where it's just you, but you want seven bedrooms? You're kind of like me. Let me show you how to get that. Yeah. Let me get your credit together, and let me show you how to get the house, okay? Oh, you want to open your own business? Let me show you how to get funding, commercial funding. Mm -hmm. I already got that down, too. Okay. But then what happened was I discovered something that was kind of pushing back and creating a cap on people's credit. I discovered that the credit report and the credit score was not the most important thing anymore. There were new scores and new reports that creditors, lenders, mm -hmm. bankers were looking at behind your back. Wow. Right? You all know LexisNexis is one of those reports, yeah. right? Yeah. You can have a 700 credit score and have a LexisNexis report on you that the mortgage bank won't give you a copy of the report. They'll just say, you have an outstanding public record in Ohio. And you're like, how'd you know that? It's not on my credit report. Well, LexisNexis, right? Then there's background reports now that lenders get from the credit bureaus. I have my background report in here. I've never been in prison. But I can tell you this, this background report, report won't show you that I've never been in prison. It's 78 pages. I have 43 felon, felony charges on this report. Mm. And guess who sells this report? The credit bureau. TransUnion sells this report wow. to all of the companies that want to review me for high-end credit. Wow. So when you want to go get a preferred card, like a black card, I have two in my pocket and I submit to you. They don't give them to you because you're African-American. Okay? <laughs> They don't, they don't give you black cards because you're African-American, okay? They give you these because you are less than a half a percent of the people on the planet that have the kind of credit and profile to get it, right? So when I found out why I couldn't get a black card or why I couldn't get commercial loans, because I only bought the Rolls Royce because I wanted to actually buy a building. I wanted to get a 20-unit building and I needed 360000 and they wouldn't give it to me because they said they didn't have a pay experience for 360. So I said, okay, let me go get it. So I went and bought a Lamborghini. I came back to the dealership. I said, I bought it in my company name. It's a pay experience. They said, no, you got to keep it a year. I said, oh, man, I got to keep it a year? So I kept it a year, and I learned how to drift around corners. I started, became a part of a race group, a Lamborghini group, and I've had it seven years. Right? So then when I went back to the bank, they said, no, you still can't do it because the pay experience is too old. You waited too long. So I said, ah. So I went and bought a Rolls Royce. They said, okay, you're on Rolls Royce, now you're two in debt. So I said, oh my God. But no, this wasn't what it was. It was this background report that had all this criminal stuff on it. Now, there's another report they use, payroll reports. They'll show you what's in your payroll. They'll tell how many hours you work, how many bonuses you get. All of that is in your payroll report. But the key to the one that they really use to cap you is your banking activity report. It goes back 10 years. It shows all your debits, all your credits, all your deposits, right? For 10 years. And guess what else? Every account you have, it shows what you have in savings and checking, all right, and your savings account. Can you imagine you're applying for something that you really can't afford, but you got a 740 credit score, but you believe in the Lord that you should have it, right? And then you go to get it, and they say, well, no, you can't have it. You're confused. Well, I'll unconfuse you. I have a book here with all the reports that have had you vexed and confused why you can't have what you have. Okay, and I brought them to show them to you because I don't want you to believe me, right? I don't want you to believe me. I don't know how to manage money. I don't know anything about annuities, 401ks. I don't know anything about that. I just know how many times I can sign my name and walk away what I want. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to leave. I think that's been about seven minutes. I feel it in my spirit. <laughs> saw me speaking up, okay? So if, if anyone has any questions or would like to see these reports, they are my personal ones, I would love to show them to you. And I can't wait to refer all my clients to Mr. Thomas and Mr. Purnell because I don't want them to stay like just credit is enough. I really want legacy, not liability yeah. for this, yeah. okay? Yeah. All right, thank you so much. Something that is extraordinary. Yes, yes, this is. Yes.